Hello and welcome to Electro Study. In this session, I am going to discuss the demonstration of cold pit oscillator. In the previous session, we have covered crystal oscillator and RC phase shift oscillator. Now you can have a look on how to set up the circuit of cold pit oscillator and verify the output. Our ultimate goal is to design and set up cold pit tube oscillator using BJT. Also, we need to determine the frequency and the amplitude of that particular waveform. We are using the following components. You can have a look on this. First of all, you need to draw a circuit diagram in your record with a very clear specification. This is very crucial for bringing up the circuit diagram. For your exam point of view, the drawing of circuit diagram is very essential. Without drawing, it is not possible to proceed further. So, need circuit diagram is mandatory. As you can see, uh, the expected waveform, this is your expected waveform, yeah. So this will be the expected waveform. You need to determine the frequency, all right. That is the ultimate goal of the experiment, fine. Uh, first of all, you have to rig up the circuit and provide the suitable VCC. And we need to check the probe properly and we have to set the input, we have to set the output at the CRO. Okay, you know that uh, there is no input in case of oscillator. We are not giving any inputs, right? So we'll be we'll be getting the AC waveform. That is output. Uh, then you need to consider the the feedback resistor. Using the feedback resistor, you can uh, check whether the output is varying or not. Now I am going to show you the demonstration. Fine. So let us have a look on that. Now we would like to show you the demonstration of whole pitch oscillator. So what are the components required? Uh, we require the passive components. Also, we require the display device CRO and uh, we need RPS. Also, we need to have CRO probe to connect the output from the breadboard to uh, CRO. So you can observe very clearly, this is the entire setup of conducting this particular experiment. Now I'll be showing you what we have done and how we are getting the output. So have a look on this. So as you can see, we have done uh, the entire uh, components uh, in the particular breadboard itself. So please identify the components. So you can see uh, we require the transistor at the beginning. So initially the transistor you have to connect, you have to identify the collector, emitter and base. Okay. So that we already explained how to check the components or how to identify the terminals of the transistor. That is an important part. Next we require an inductor. So you can see the inductor. Okay. Inductor is already placed over there. Okay. You need to have the inductor. Then we require the capacitor. Fine. Then resistor, resistor elements. You check the circuit diagram, understand the circuit diagram very clearly, collect all the components and rig up accordingly. So whenever you are connecting, this is called electrolytic capacitor. Okay. This is your electrolytic capacitor. Electrolytic capacitor. So whenever you are connecting the electrolytic capacitor, you have to see the positive and negative terminal. They have mentioned clearly which is positive, which is negative very clearly. If I talk about the ceramic, whatever I have mentioned the capacitor, that is the ceramic capacitor. Okay. Uh, ceramic capacitor. In case of ceramic capacitor, no need to worry about positive and negative. Wherever you want, you can connect. You can use the two leads anywhere, with, uh, irrespective or regardless of polarity. So that is another important point. Even resistor also polarity doesn't matter. Don't get confused regarding that. So you have to rig up the connection properly. Fine. Uh, then you have to connect the output uh, to the CRO, fine. Then you need to provide the biasing voltage uh, from the R regulated DC power supply. Biasing voltage will be given as 10 volt that you have to set. It will be DC only, yes. So this is your entire circuit. So like this, you can uh, go ahead, check the connection properly. It should be optimized. So don't make the connection too bulkier. And you need to identify the ground and uh, ground and VCC very clearly. For example, you can uh, check it up. I'll, I'll show you. I'll give you one shortcut. So the first point is considered as VCC. Let us make plus sign. The second point is considered as ground that is negative. Second row. 
All right. Similarly, the first row is considered as VCC. The second row is considered as ground at the lower segment. Do one thing. You try to interconnect uh, the negative and the negative which is available in the lower segment. Connect each other. We have done the same manner. Look at this. The black wire. Moreover, uh, the VCC, positive terminal. So, positive terminal has to be connected to each other. Please refer here. So, here we have done one positive. That is directly given to where uh, the positive terminal. So, positive and positive should be connected to each other. That you need to practice. There, here also, anywhere you can consider positive, negative. This will be positive, negative. Plus stand for VCC. Minus stand for ground. Understood, no? So, like that you can uh, interconnect each other. So, there won't be any confusion. Fine, no? So, this practice you can uh, do every time and uh, you can make the connection continuous without any uh, confusion you can go ahead. Otherwise, still people will get confused which is VCC, which is ground. This is one of the shortcuts which I would like to recommend for everybody. So, you can adopt the same practice in your practice session as well as examination. So, you won't get any further confusion. So, this is the way how to perform the connections. Okay, connection should be rigid. I repeat, uh, it should be neat and tidy. We need to identify how the terminals are uh, connected to each other. How, where, where is the output? How we are going to provide the DC supply? Yes, this is your expected output because oscillator now output will be sinusoidal. Okay, uh, here you need to measure the frequency as well as amplitude. I will tell you how to measure the frequency first. So, to measure the frequency, what you are supposed to do is you have to measure the time per division. Number one, time per division has to be measured. Now, number two, you need to measure the horizontal distance for completion of one cycle. Where is the one cycle? Yeah. Let us consider this point. It will be starting from here, right? Okay, fine. So, uh, in this fashion, it will be terminating. So, what I require is, I require the horizontal distance. It will be almost 1.4. You can measure Okay, one, one complete box should be one only, then 1 1.2, 1 1.4, 1.4. This 1.4 should be multiplied with the time per division. Time per division. Then you will be getting the time period. Understood, no? Time period. Once I get the time period, how to get the frequency? Frequency is nothing but 1 by the time period. 1 by time period. So, I will be getting the frequency in terms of uh, megahertz or kilohertz. Fine. This is the way how to estimate the frequency uh, from the CRO. Uh, if you talk about some more, uh, some advanced type CRO, everything is available uh, in the screen itself. Okay. Now, how to measure the amplitude, peak to peak amplitude? So, you have to count from here to here, you are supposed to count. It will be like a 1, then 2, 3. The upper portion, it will be uh, point 0.4, the lower portion will point, point 0.4. So, total uh, 3.8. 3.8. Height will be 3.8. So, I am measuring from here to here. Right. Height is 3.8. That should be multiplied with the volt per division. Volt per division. Where is volt per division? Yes, this is your volt per division. Okay. Uh, it may be in terms of 0.2 or not identified. Volt per division. This will be the total voltage Peak to peak, peak to peak voltage. I can write a V peak to peak. Fine. No? So, this is the way how to uh, measure the voltage that you are supposed to make out. Voltage and frequency has to be measured from the output. Some CRO no worries, direct result is available, but uh, this is these are the conventional way. As an engineering student, you should know start, start you should start from the fundamentals. Everything should be start from uh, the beginning only. Okay. In the primary level only. So that is why uh, I just shown you how to measure the frequency and uh, uh, amplitude by using uh, CRO. Okay. Uh, now let us continue. So we are to draw the waveform in your record book also. This is your expected output. So you need to know uh, these fundamentals uh, to make the final, to write the final result. Okay. You should get the AC waveform. That is the conclusion. So, 
remember how to measure the frequency and amplitude that's all so this is the way how to connect the uh, dc supply here and how to take the output okay so for biasing purpose we require dc supply that is given uh, from the rps regulated dc power supply so that is shown here it's almost 10 volt okay only this much uh, let me know if you are having any uh, queries related to pole pitch oscillator it's a simple experiment only you, you already have the experience of doing rc phase shift oscillator crystal oscillator then this also will be very simple okay so uh, proceed in this fashion try to practice as as much as possible and uh, fine tune the output so thank you for watching this video let me know if you are having any uh, questions. Have a good day.